Hi guys. Okay, it's crazy hot out here. Um, but I wanted to share something um, with you guys today. Um, this is pertaining to the Jehovah's Witnesses. And of course, everything that they do can actually cross over into all the controlling organizations, such as the Illuminati, any structure that is um, created in order to control the minds of the people. So this is a book that I read years ago in high school, and um, I really didn't pay attention to it in high school. I did enjoy it, but once I picked it up again, I saw it like two years ago in a bookstore, I picked it up again and I said, hey, I want to read this book. I remember how much I liked it. So the book is called Fahrenheit 451 by Ray Bradbury. And I'm sure that many of you have read this in school, but I admonish you, please read it again because it gives you so much insight into what they're all about and how they make their um, agendas actually become um, reality. So here it is. I want to share something with you guys that really stuck out to me. Now, there was this character named Clarice. And she kind of reminds me of the typical Jehovah's Witness. And um, so does Montag. Mont Montag reminds me of what Jehovah's Witnesses term an apostate, someone who goes against the teachings of Jehovah's Witnesses and looks outside of their leaders and starts to question things. So what I was thinking is that Jehovah's Witnesses, they um, have so many different um agendas and they have a way of making them work in such a special way um, that they're using psychology, they're using mind control. I know that they are, um, they own the highest percentage of stock in a company called RAND and RAND is a military company that specializes in military equipment. So why are they with a company that deals with military anything? You have to ask yourself. But not only that, this company, RAND, specializes in mind control techniques. Yeah, I'll say it again, mind control techniques. So would you question or wonder whether or not the Jehovah's Witnesses are using their victims as guinea pigs for this mind control technique company um, in order to figure out a way to enslave the world in the future or all of America? I say that they are. I say that the um, Jehovah's Witnesses are the testing subjects. You are the guinea pigs that they are using. And guess what? Their plan, their prescription works. It works. But every now and again, you get a couple of us that kind of want to soar out and discover and read a book. Remember, in this book, they were burning books. They didn't want people to, burn, to read any books because they have ideas beyond what they wanted them to be conditioned to believe. So the Jehovah's Witnesses, I was thinking how, you know, they tell people not to go to college. Now, why would you not want people to go to college and get an education and learn something? What are in colleges that teaches people? Books, guys. Books. Jehovah's Witnesses, like the book Fahrenheit 451, are burning out of existence any written pages that deal with anything contrary to what they teach, especially when it comes to their religion. But even outside of their religion, if you're not allowing someone to go to college, there is information contained in the books in colleges that you are denying your followers access to. So therefore, you have burnt all of the books that they would have had access to had they decided to go to college or higher education. So I'm going to start off because there's this girl, Clarice McClellan, which I tell, told you is reminds me of the typical sheeple Jehovah's Witness going to the meetings. Um, and actually, she's a little far beyond that because she kind of is just so curious about life. And the powers that be don't like this about her. They have watched her family for so long since she was born to find out why she's so curious because curiosity is not allowed in this world. You're not allowed to be curious. So if someone's curious, they kind of tag you and they watch you to see what you're doing. And this young lady, she went by the rules, but she was just 
a curious, inquisitive young lady, and they were threatened by that because they realized that had they allowed that quality in her to be nurtured, she might not only rub off on other people, but she might start discovering beyond what it is that they wanted her to know. So here it is. So I mentioned what happened to her. I'm going to read about Beatty, Beatty, Beatty. He is the fireman chief that actually burns all of the books that um, the people are discovered having in their homes. So this is what he says. He says, um, he says, let me see, hold on. Clarice McClellan, weave a record on her family. We've watched them carefully. Heredity and environment are funny things. You can rid yourselves of all the odd ducks in just a few years. The home environment can undo a lot, a lot you try to do at school. That's why we've lowered the kindergarten age year after year until now we're almost snatching them from the cradle. Don't the witnesses teach you to teach your child from infancy? So I'll read that again. And he says, that's why we've lowered the kindergarten age year after year until now we're almost snatching them from the cradle. We had some false alarms on the McClellans when they lived in Chicago. Never found a book. Uncle had a mixed record, antisocial. The girl, she was a time bomb. The family had been feeding her subconsciously. I'm sure from what I saw of her record, school record, she didn't want to know how things were done, but why? That can be embarrassing. You ask why to a lot of things and you wind up very unhappy indeed if you keep at it. The poor girl's better off dead. Yes, dead. Dead in spirit, dead in thinking, dead in independence, dead in curiosity, dead in all of those things that make someone an individual and make someone want to learn outside of themselves. So then he goes on, he says, luckily, clear one, queer ones like her don't happen often. We know how to nip most of them in the bud early. You can't build a house without nails and wood. If you don't want a house built, hide the nails and the wood. If you don't want a man unhappy politically, don't give him two sides to a question to worry him. Give him one. Better yet, give him none. Let him forget there is a such thing as war. If the government is inefficient, top-heavy, and tax-mad, Better it be all those then that people worry over it. Peace, Montag, he's speaking to Montag. Give the people contest. They win by remembering the words to more popular songs or the names to state capitals or how much corn Iowa grew, out, Iowa grew last year. Cram them full of non-combustible data. Choke them so damn full of facts that they feel stuck but absolutely brilliant with information. Then they'll feel their thinking. They'll get a sense of motion without even moving. And they'll be happy because facts of that sort don't change. Don't give them any slippery stuff like philosophy or sociology to tie things up with. That way lies melancholy. Any man who can take a TV wall apart and put it back together again, and most men can nowadays, is happier than any man who tries to slide rule, measure, and equate the universe, which just won't be measured or equated without making man feel bestial and lonely. So guys, read this book. This is a depiction of the Jehovah's Witnesses to a T. They get someone from infancy. They don't want them being anything individual, not unique. They want them all cloned in a fashion of what their watchtowers create in an individual. They don't want questioning. They want you to get a trade so that you feel as though you've accomplished something. But anything outside of a trade that would make you curious to learn how the universe is created, they will dissuade you from even venturing in that way. And in fact, the way you've been trained since you were a child, you won't even want to venture into that because they've made you so docile and so content in the life that they've, the nothing life that they've given you that you think that you are happy. 
See, this is how they work. They deny you college so that you have no questions. You think not outside of the box, but you stay within the box. You see, in the future, guys, if the New World Order and the Illuminati have their way, none of us will be thinking freely. None of us will have an independent mind or ask why or, or who or where or when. We'll just say okay and accept whatever answers that they give us. Guys, those books that people are getting on computer, I forget, on the computer, I don't have one, so I don't even know the names of them. E-books or whatever, you pay for a book and then you get it on your computer. Why not paper? Why not the way that books were always given to you so that if there's a computer malfunction, you don't lose your book. If there's a worldwide computer malfunction, books are not gone. Keep your book. Don't let anyone tell you what's in the book. Open the book. Read it yourself. Discover it yourself and become your own teacher, your own searcher, and your own verifier of facts or your own verifier of, li of lies. So again, Fahrenheit 451, I highly, highly recommend it. If you guys find other things in it that you like to share, because I'm telling you, you will find much. Let me know. Um, let's discuss it. Take care. Bye.